right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my favorite shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve. Using shortcuts in your video editing software will save you an immense amount of time in post-production. The best way to elongate your post-production time in the editing process is not learn the shortcuts or learn just maybe one or two or three shortcuts and then like completely stop that education process from learning those three into learning four, five, six, and then building on the ones you already learned. As I started to take on more and more projects, I started to notice my bottleneck was happening in the editing process. So I was just looking for ways to just speed up that workflow. And normally when you think of shortcuts, it's like, okay, that saved me 0.02 seconds, or that may have saved me two seconds not realizing that those two seconds turn into minutes. Those minutes turn into hours. As you start to add up all of this time that's building up against you, you now cannot turn over products as fast as you would like, which inherently can prohibit you into making more income. So in today's video, this is gonna be super quick. I'm gonna go over two of my favorite keyboard shortcuts to use in DaVinci Resolve. When working in such of a creative field like video editing, it's really hard to just be like, yo, you need to do this. You need to do this, you need to do that. Or they may say you can do it this way, but I recommend that you figure out the best way that it can work for you. In contrast to that, when it comes to these two shortcuts that I'm gonna talk about in DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna go ahead and say that you have to use these shortcuts. I'm not gonna say that you have to program the same keys that I have mine programmed to, but these two keyboard shortcuts in particular, I'm gonna go ahead and say as a video editor, you have to use these two shortcuts because would you rather save time or would you rather waste time? That's pretty much what it boils down to. The task that I'm doing for this particular part of the edit is I'm doing the rough cut. So I basically wanna take all of that blank space out. That brings us to our first shortcut, which is I and O, and using I and O makes it so that you set an endpoint within your preview window, and then you can set an out point within your preview window. The best way to scroll within this preview window is to hover your mouse over this dot with the two arrows on the left and right. And what it'll do is it'll enable you to slowly scan through the entire clip instead of actually using this tab here, which is a little bit less, the feedback is just a little less accurate. You have to put the mouse directly over the marker and sometimes you miss it or whatever. So the best thing to do is just to grab this dot right here. We are at the very start of the clip right here. I noticed that, yes, it looks pretty good right at the beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit I. As Soon as I hit I, I'm gonna look for the out point, which is when it gets to the blank spot. Right there, I'm gonna go back just a little bit and then hit O. Now, as soon as we hit O, what I used to do is I used to take this clip right here and I used to click it and drag it onto the timeline right here. Now that works. That's not that bad because that's just one, that's literally just one click and drag. But when we start to compile more clips on top of that, as we figure out where our in and out points are at, we wanna make sure that we can drag these points with just one click of a button from this preview window down into our timeline. So let's go ahead and look for the next part of our clip. And so we're gonna pick up right where we left off and let that blank spot go away. And then right here, so I'll go ahead and hit I, scroll over until it goes away and hit O. And then this brings us to our second shortcut, which in DaVinci Resolve, the default is F9. And what F9 does is it brings that in and out point that you just selected in the preview window straight down to the timeline. The only bad thing about this is that it also brings the audio down, but we can always fix that later as we get the timeline completed towards the end of the edit. So once again, we'll go ahead and move along to the next usable part of the clip. We'll go ahead and hit I. And all I'm doing on my fingers is I'm sticking my middle finger on the I, my pointer finger on my left hand, I'm putting on the O, and then on my right hand, I'm using it, you know, I'm actuating the mouse. There is my out point right here, and I'm just gonna hit F9, that brings that down. Double click on the clip again, and then I'm gonna simply go through the entire clip until my entire usable footage is now in my timeline. All right, man, so we'll go ahead and stop right there. I think you could pretty much figure out um, the rest from here, but just for that little part that I did took me less than two minutes, and now I have all those usable clips down in my timeline. And then as I start to wrap up the edit, I can tighten up the clips and then play them along with music, or I can edit them down as I want to as I approach the end of the project. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up with the second shortcut that I use all the time. This saves me a whole bunch of time as I approach the end of my project. If I was to compile every single one of these clicks that I'm doing on the mouse and then dragging it up and all around my video editing software, 
it probably literally saves me 20 to 30 minutes per project, which turns into, like I was saying earlier, an hour to two hours as I start to roll over projects throughout the week. I'm looking at easily one to two hours saved and I can use that one to two hours to squeeze in another edit to then increase my income even more. So going back over into the same timeline that we were just working in, let's go ahead and work on this last clip right here. And let's say that this clip here and on was unusable. Let's say the camera started shaking or for whatever reason, I wanted to take where the header is at and from here all the way to the end, I want to delete that. The way that I used to do this is I would open my cut key. So I'd hit, I'd hit C, which opens up my cut tool I would actually cut it hit V which takes it from cut back to select then I would select that portion of the clip with the mouse and then I would hit backspace which deleted that portion of the clip so let's go back into an easier way to do it and so back here with the playhead at the portion of the clip where I want to delete from here forward. All we're gonna do when we get the header at the exact spot where we want to delete from here forward, we're gonna hit shift, close bracket, and that deletes everything from the header forward. Now we're gonna look and go back and see what if I wanted to delete everything from this clip back going towards the front of the timeline. All I have to do now is once I get that header into the spot that I want it, I'm gonna hit shift, open bracket, and it's gonna do the exact same thing. Now, as an additional bonus, I'll go ahead and throw in one more shortcut because now we have a little gap here. And this last shortcut I'm going to talk about is ripple delete. With ripple delete, all we have to do now is select the area that we want to take out and hit E. And so that's going to close up everything. It's going to make sure that all our gaps aren't there. And really the number one reason why I like using ripple delete is because it makes sure that we don't have any drop frames throughout the entire project. Another way that we can use ripple delete is if I want to delete this entire clip right here in the center, what I used to do is select the clip, go ahead and delete it. And now we have this gap here. And then I would take this clip and then close it in just like that. So now if we go back, if we use ripple delete, all we have to do now is select the clip and hit ripple delete and it closes down our timeline for us automatically. You can easily find all of these shortcuts if you go into the DaVinci Resolve tab on the upper left, hit keyboard customization, and then you can search for whatever shortcut that you guys want to customize um, depending on whatever um, video editing software that you're coming from. So once again, real quick, just to wrap up this video, the very number one keyboard customization or keyboard shortcut that I use for DaVinci Resolve is in and out when I'm using it for my previews, along with F9 to go ahead and bring those in and out portions of that clip down into the timeline automatically. And just recently I did switch it from F9, which is the DaVinci Resolve default keyboard shortcut. And I changed it to P so that way I can just go I, O, and then P, and then rinse and repeat I, O, P all the way throughout all of my preview media and all of those clips just go straight down to the timeline and it is awesome. The second shortcut that I recommended you guys use is called trim end or trim beginning and the way you use that is by hitting shift and then either open or close bracket depending on whether you want to trim from the playhead forward or from the playhead back. And then the very last keyboard shortcut that I recommended you guys use is called ripple delete. You can find that in the Venture Resolve keyboard customization portion and all you have to do is go into the search part and type in in all three of those keyboard shortcuts and they'll come up and then you could customize them to whatever you guys want whatever whatever your preference is basically for ripple delete i found that setting ripple delete to e was the best way for me to do it because as i look at my keyboard i'm like an ex gamer so i used to have my wasd always like my fingers would just automatically go there so if i just put my pointer finger right up to the e i can easily use ripple delete and so yeah whatever preferences you guys want to set all of these keyboard shortcuts to just find it and then learn it and then use it. One last thing before I let you guys go, looking at all these keyboard shortcuts can seem daunting, especially when you open up the DaVinci Resolve portion and you just look at all of these keyboard shortcuts and you're like, how the fuck am I gonna remember all of this shit? But the best way that I found to do it is to just pick one or two shortcuts and then implement those shortcuts into your current project. As you start to feel comfortable with those one or two shortcuts and then implementing that into that project, this will then allow you the opportunity to just pick up maybe one or two more to build off of the two you know. Now you know four, now you know six, now you know eight. Pretty soon you're gonna know 12, like the back of your hand. And just think about all that time that you're saving as you start to build up this stockpile of keyboard shortcuts, it's going to drastically cut down some of your editing time and enable you to be able to do more things like go to the beach, hang out with the family, take on another project, do whatever it is you want to do instead of sitting in front of the computer for six hours. 
seven hours, eight hours. If you like this video, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on TikTok. I'm on both of those platforms as well. And how about you other video editors out there? What shortcuts are you guys using to help improve your editing workflow? I would like to know, hit me up in the comments below. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.